Alright, so this is going to be about Botch RPS. Basically, using it, downloading it, using it, creating a new panel, stuff like that, etc. So, first we're going to want to go to the internet, and we're just going to want to go to the Botch RPS page. So, and then, so we go here, you can just Google it. And then you, well, whatever. So the security dongle, you will only need the security dongle if you want to program any panel that's not a B-series panel. Um, and so if you want to make a, um, if you need to like use a G-series panel or any of the older like Radeon X panels and stuff, you need the security dongle. But otherwise you can just go here, download it. You can still program that, you just can't communicate with it. So you want to download find software which is um you know you are, I mean RPS delay is basically just I think it's just RPS but you know with less stuff in it but you just want to download the uh, we're just going to download the regular version today which is as of right now the latest version 6.14.001 and that'll take about a minute to download Alright, now that it's done, we can just launch it here. Um, just, let's just extract it. As you can see here, we have it in the folder here. And here we got our setup file. So we're going to want, want to launch our setup file. And then choose our language. And we have to install the uh, required items. And also use the advanced install to change a few things. Go next. And usually this kind of not responds a lot. You, this is a common thing you'll see in RPS. You just let it wait there and eventually it will work. Um, hit next here. And it's installing more of the prerequisites. All right, we just, here's our installation folder. And here's all the handlers that we can get. Um, I was just gonna install all the handlers here. And just a folder, and next, and now we're installing. And now it's complete, so uh, it's not do a restart. This restart is not completely necessary, but you might need it for some functions. And then now we're in the RPS, so you can go ahead and launch it now. And here we are. You need to launch the administrator. And the, the default username and password will be admin and one 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 and we are now in the programming software just give it a bit of time this is going to be your first time configuration setup system thing we return rps here and then we can create a new panel so here it is all of our new panels we can create we can also do the existing template panels so i'll just go over them real quick the b9512 the b8512 to the g series panels the B series panels, including the B6512, 5512, 4512, and 3512. You got the B465, which is the uh, their commute will dialer for some panels. Um, you got your you got your um, D9412, 9000, and 8000 series panels. The of course you got the Botch and Radionics versions. And all the Radionics panels, including the D6412, 4412, 4212, 2212, 2612, D6112, D6112, DS7212, DS7212, DS this panel, and their Easy Series, whatever that is, and then the the D7024, SDS, 9400, and the FPD7024. And I believe all these panels, except for the uh, B-Series, requires a dongle. I'm not sure about the like the fire panels and stuff, since those have uh, onboard programming and stuff. But you need one of these dongles here. One of these here. You can get them on eBay, too. But, like, they have the what you need for the thing um 
to use other panels that are not B series. Well, you can still program them with it, but you just need you, you but you can't um, upload the program to them without the dongle. So, for example, I'm for, for at least for first, I'm gonna create a uh, B5512. And then it will load. Once it loads, you'll see there's a Bosch account assistant. You just begin it. Uh, you can go back to save and skip it if you want, I guess. I mean, this is basically just like a simple thing where you just go through the slides and like put in information about the system. So we just put, I don't know, panel, I guess. Next, we can boot these blank. Consider panel time zone. I'll just leave that as a default. We can set a second language. So our primary and second languages, those are the B series, supports a variety of languages. And we can choose how we're going to communicate. I'll just leave it on default. If we, now, if we're using a telephone card, we'd use that. Same if we're using a cellular card. Uh, the Ethernet's on board. Um, and then if you're using Ethernet, you got to put in your thing. And same if you're, if you're using modem and stuff. And now we can name our areas there, if you want, and our count number. This is the count number that uses to, to uh, communicate with the central station. You got your exit delay time. You want to set, and then now you can set your points here. So we have total 48 points. Of course, it's please 28 on board, and the including the module, special module, and you can have like. 28 or something like with the uh, B810 raid gun receivers. So this is by default a smoke detector, but if you want, we can. I don't know. Of course, you have to be has to be on board. But let's say we want to make a uh, interior a delay or part on delay. Uh, so part on is the exterior devices, and interior is of course the interior devices. So uh, now we just had a part on delay here as an example. Here we can set our outputs, so the name of our outputs, and what we want these outputs to do. And now we can set our user codes here. The installer code by default is 123, and the user1 code by default is 123456, and default has off level 1, and of course you can set all these up to 49 users, at least on the B5512. And then here we can set up if we want, like, how uses the but technology uses this to communicate with the central station our central station stuff here and now we can click here if you're opening the panel again after um, doing it like setting up the panel initially uh, like every time you want to go to the panel view you have to click to save and then open panel view from here and then you can click save here and then now it'll open the main panel view all right, now we're in the panel view. We can go ahead and maximize this. So here's our compliance settings. If this is a uh, commercial fire listed panel, you'll see the one for the UL face 894 fire compliance. Uh, but you can also say if it's a European application or if it's ULC compliance. And here's some of our panel-wide perimeters. So we have our phone and phone perimeters. So we can set our phone things. We can also say if it's a... Uh, 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 if you're using it, uh, dial or rotary, uh, no, it's hydrotoner dot rotary. Uh, you can configure your onboard Ethernet communicator. Same thing with the cellular plugin, and here's the cloud room settings. If you want to connect IP cameras to the system, you can do it here. And this is where you can set where the reports route on the system. Communicator, um, of course, you can see like if you have back primary backup and stuff and here's you can use enhanced communication uh sdi to enhance communication i don't know it's basically like so if you want to not sure what that is but um you're gonna get your power supervision i guess this has to do something with like like rps over network but i'm not sure but here we can just set how long the uh the AC power must be out before the uh, panel goes into trouble. And we can suck if you want the system to race had an AC fail. AC fail delay and a fail 
buzz, these buzz things, you'll see, basically, you can set whether you want the panel to, um, to start beeping, or the key file to start going beeping when the panel has AC loss and stuff. Consider RPS passcode and other stuff and miscellaneous stuff when it comes to like say your dress code. So like if I set if I set the one then then the dress code but if I had to make a passcode one two or one 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 then my dress code would be one 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 two. You can set our cancel reports if you want to set them to send cancel reports and you can set our call to service text. You can also set your September response, on site operation for software updates, fire and gas stuff. So basically, with most of the stuff, you got your time zone, time format, the light savings time stuff. Here, you can set personal, uh, personal notification. So like if you want to send emails and stuff to you, you can do that. And here's our area right perimeters. Um, stuff like the exit tone, if you want to have the exit tone for different areas, if you want the area to be on. The area name, area type, with the patterns and stuff, and so you can set the keypad army text, and here's where you assign your keypads. So you can choose between the different keypad options, depending on what kind of keypad you have. If it's a G series system, you can choose like your fire keypads as well as your like um whatever they are the D series keypads. You can set if your your scope of the system, which basically means if you want the keypad to be an area-wide keypad, a, a panel-wide keypad, or an account-wide keypad. So basically, that means like the panel-wide keypad, it will show it will be able to show any devices within the entire panel. If it's an account-wide, then it'll be doing it only for that account. And if it's area-wide, then it can only show devices for that account. We can set if what areas are in that scope and stuff, you can enter key output, enter passcode enter function, so you can set the login if you want. Um, say if you want to enter your exit tone on that keypad, set the keypad volume, stuff like that, deal with the escape button. Go to our keypad assignments, this is where you could say like your uh, custom function keys, which are the keys on the left of the B, B920, and some other keypads have the two. So, uh, well, not, I think, well, the B9, the, like, on the touchscreen keypad, it's, like, on a thing on it, like, on a menu, where your shortcuts are. Actually, no, I'm, I don't know, but it might be in the toolbar. And you can also set your, your key fob stuff. So you, so, you set custom functions. This is where you can, like, see, like, whether... Like what you want a custom function to do, and you can trigger custom functions from like the A, B, and C buttons or stuff like that, or just from a menu item if you want. So you can set you can set a custom function as a menu item, so you can have like a series of things happen. So a wide variety of things. This is where you can test your shortcut menu. So there's a wide variety of stuff you can put in your shortcut menu, up to 32 items in your shortcut menu. This is stuff like maybe firewalk test or changing your passcode or having a part on the way, panics, all that stuff, being your log, sounds your ketone, so it's a, it's obviously a wide variety of items you can choose here, and you can choose which keypads you want to have it show, shown on. You can sort your outputs, so what, you, you can configure your outputs in this menu here, uh, your output profiles, types of outputs, basically. Here you can choose our user codes and stuff, like user groups, you know, stuff like that. And here's where you can configure points. So, again, we have up to 48 points on the B5512. For example, if I wanted a wireless point here, you can choose wireless. And let's say it's a dual window contact. If it's a wireless device, you will have to have a, your Radeon RFID. Which is basically the ID assigned to every wireless point, like on the physical device. Here's our point profiles, which basically you choose, like customize what, what points do. So, what for example, if I want a if pull station to um, have launch point, which that doesn't make sense, but I could do it. 
we can choose like what what kind of points have watch if like it's not this is not it's not common but sometimes you'll see like motion sensors with watched telling on it and so if you want that you can do that you can configure your schedules for your system uh, and then you got your remote app your SCDI 2 modules like the octo and uh, octo input and output things the IP communicator and the wireless receivers and if you have a wireless receiver if you don't have a wireless receiver make sure this is on unassigned or else you'll get a missing um, a missing uh, wireless device trouble. You can also turn on if you have a closer tamper switch. And here you got your repeaters and your hardware switch settings. So basically, went for all these settings they have um, on a. Of course, the like the B ninety five twelve G will have more settings, but it's because they're more complex models. Like you have your access control settings and stuff. Also, you can set more fire fire stuff and commercial more of a obviously it's a commercial panel but like obviously you have more settings on that but I'm not gonna get into that right now uh, go ahead and close this so you can see our data and let's try I'm not gonna try all these panels but let's, for example let's show the FED7024 so um, you can set our panel name and stuff um, and here's our panel we can go ahead and launch it um, and we can obviously program our panel um, obviously this is not really that useful doing it for here because you have the built-in uh, LCD which lets you program it on the FAD7024 and, and same with the D7024 so it's not 100% required to have it but you can change up your report codes and stuff if you wanted it here but I guess maybe some people might need it and can generate I'll put on our outputs, your configurations. Again, if you want it, it's there. To program the FPD 7024 and the Z7024. So, of course, got our MX modules and stuff. Um, so, get out of that. And let's try a uh, D912 7412G, uh, which is a radionics panel. Um, so, we can launch it up. And again, it also has a more of an older user interface, but we obviously have our options for that. We can change our area text, our command center settings, um, our passcode settings, and stuff like that. And our uh, RADX AUX1 settings for our S SDI stuff here, hardware switch settings, all that stuff, user interface settings. So yeah, we got our settings for that. And so to connect to a D70, no, an F. A uh, D series panel. You need the the modem, uh, the invalid or missing hardware key. Um, yeah, I don't not sure if that means like the dongle because I'm doing this on a virtual machine here. So I did my new machine and it let me view the thing, but I don't think it would let me program it. So I don't know what that's about, but oh well. Um, yeah, that and. I guess I don't know, but let's we'll see if it shows up on the FPD 7024. So to program a uh, D series panel, you obviously need the modem. So you can connect. Oh, okay, so you can connect through the modem for the um, FPD 7024 and stuff. But I guess that's your only way to do it with that. And it's, but with your B for your B series and G in the G series, like the B G series, you can have a Go ahead and here connect it, and uh, you need to allow on Fire Windows Firewall. You can connect through cloud, sell your sell your callback, USB network, IP directed modem. So you have lots of different ways to connect to it. But when you're kind of using USB, you're gonna want to connect the USB A to USB A cable to your panel, um, and you don't need to use the Bosch B99 cord. You can just use any USB A USB A cord, or if you don't have a USB A to USB A cord, I heard a USB C to USB A cord will work too if your computer has a USB C port on it. So, yeah. And that's basically it for that. So, that's basically I just kind of went through a quick run through uh, of the RPS software. Not really too in depth, but I wish just kind of a little run through of it just because why not? So, um, 
Yep. Thanks for watching.